Okay, uh, the, the camera got, uh, the video cut off there um, for some reason, so I had to erase some files, but now we should be ready to go. Um, so continuing uh, with autumn words associated with the earth. Hanazono, said the flower garden, all of autumn. Um, Hanano, so no is the word for field, right? Hanano, all, all of autumn, a flowery field. Flowery meadow gives it a, a better sense of the word. Uh, Akinota, all of autumn. Akinomizu, waters of autumn. All of autumn, the clear waters of autumn, no longer muddied by summer rains. And the first autumnal tide is Hatsushio, is a mid autumn word. Okay, the high tide is associated with the harvest moon. Okay, the next subcategory for autumn is humanity, so things associated with humans and human activities. Uh, shin soba, new soba is a late autumn word. Right, soba is of course uh, the buckwheat noodles uh, from the new crop. Uh, shin mai is the new rice. That's a late autumn wor word. The first rice harvested in the year. Um, autumn lamplight, Akinohi, all of autumn. Toro is early autumn word, meaning lantern, usually in the garden and made of stone or bronze. Okay, the Toro is early autumn word. Kakashi, it's a word you see a lot in Japanese poetry, all autumn. Okay, it's scarecrow, Kakashi. Uh, inekari is to cut, to karu, the ine, the rice, rice cutting or rice harvest. That's a um, late autumn word. Shin wara. It's new straw, late autumn word. Uh, warazuka is straw bundles or haystacks, late autumn word. A folding blocks, kinuta. Okay, this is the word we saw in Okuno Hosomichi the other day. All autumn, kinuta, folding blocks. Mallets used to pound fuller's uh, earth through cloth in a traditional dry cleaning process. The sound of folding blocks was typical of an autumn evening in old Japan. Uh, ashikari is to cut the ashi. Ashi is the, the reeds. It's a reed cutting. Late autumn. Sumo. Sumo is of course sumo wrestling. That's an early autumn word. Okay. So even today, I think sumo usually takes place in early autumn. You don't see it, for example, right now in the middle of the tsuyu season. Uh, autumn contemplation is the, there's a word shushi. So aki ni kangaeru koto aki ni Shi, shiso no shi, right? Um, aki ni omou koto. Uh, all autumn. Okay. Next is observances in as the subcategory for autumn. We have the Choyo, the chrysanthemum festival in late autumn. Okay, the ninth day of the ninth lunar month, about mid-October in our calendar. That's a late autumn word, the Choyo. We have Tanabata festival. It's early autumn, okay? The Weaver Star Festival, where the two lovers up in the skies aren't able to meet except uh, for one day uh, when they're able to cross, a, cr cross the bridge and meet each other on the seventh day of the seventh lunar month in our August today. However, it's sometimes celebrated on our July 7th now, but um, originally it was an early autumn festival, the Tanabata festival. Okay, we saw the Tanawata Festival, by the way, in uh, Ge by Bai Jiaoyi, the um, Song of Everlasting Sorrow that we read for the first um, story, or first poem, first work for this semester. Uh, the Bon Festival. Bon is early autumn word, obviously. The Bon Matsuri takes place in early autumn. A uh, festival of returning spirits when the dead come back and uh, say uh, communicate with the living once more takes place today between the 13th and 16th of August, on which Japanese are pleased to welcome the spirits of the dead ancestors home for a day or two. That's the Bong Festival, an early autumn kigo, seasonal word. The dance, odori, Bong odori, is another way to say the Bong Festival, and that's an early autumn word as well. On to the animals now. The subcategories, the animals of autumn are the following. Shika the deer, all autumn. Okay. Um, watari dori, the migrating birds, the birds that wataru, watari dori. 
Japan is the winter home of many birds from the north and the summer home of other birds from the south. In autumn, the skies fill with birds going one way or the other. Okay, so migrating birds, watari dori, is a scene that you see in the skies in autumn. Ine suzume, okay, ine is uh, rice, suzume is sparrow. These are a uh, seasonal word for all of autumn. They come to glean the rice left over from the harvest. Ine suzume. Uh, next, the moza is the shrike bird, right? All of autumn, the moza. Uh, sekide, the wagtail, all of autumn. The uzura the, is the quail. You see this in a lot of uh, kokinshu poems, for example. Uh, uzura, quail, is a seasonal word for all of autumn. The shigi, or the snipe bird, or the sandpiper bird, is uh, all associated with all of autumn. Uh, goose, kari, right? Kari you see a lot in the shin kokinshu, for example. I can think of a few uh, instances of kari. Goose, which is uh, somewhat different from the gang, wild goose, right? But this is a late autumn word, right? Kari. Uh, falling sweet fish, ochi ayu. Ochi ayu. Remember, ayu is the sweet fish that the um, uh, ukai uh, cormorant birds catch sometimes. This is falling sweet fish. It's a word for all of autumn. Okay, coming downstream, the uh, sweet fish in all uh, throughout autumn. Okay, let's run through this as fast as possible. Suzuki is the sea bass all of autumn. Haze is the gobi all of autumn. Iwashi, sardines all of autumn. Samma or mackerel pike late autumn. Sake or what Japanese today some kind, sometimes call shake to distinguish from sake liquor, alcohol. Uh, shake is salmon it's associated with all of autumn. Higurashi is a word you see all the time in Japanese poetry. It's the evening clear cicada. Okay, so semi is the word for cicada, but this is a specifically uh, evening clear cicada associated with early autumn. Okay, Higurashi is uh, literally uh, the word for to darken the day, or the day darkener. Um, next is Tsukutsukuboshi. Tsukutsukuboshi is a word for early autumn. A small cicada. Okay, the name is an onomatopoeia for its cry and includes the word for priest. Boshi is the word for priest, right? Tsukutsukuboshi is early autumn word. Tombo. Okay, this is a word that we talk about in my Nakanishi translation book. I think the old classical way to say it was Akitsu, right? And today it's known as Tombo. And the dragonfly is associated with all of autumn. Mushi, all of autumn. Just bugs in general. Okay, insects, bugs. Mushi is an autumn word for all of autumn. Um, many named insects are found in summer. This refers mainly to insect sounds. Okay. Korogi is an autumn word for cricket for all of autumn. Okay. Crickets. The bell cricket specifically is the suzumushi is associated with early autumn. The pine cricket, Matsumushi, is associated with early autumn as well. Uh, Kirigirisu is the uh, Katidid. Katidid. I think this is often translated as uh, grasshopper though. Kirigirisu, or grasshopper usually, is associated with early autumn. Mimizu naku is associated with all of autumn. Mimi ze naku, all of autumn. Early Japanese poets invented the literary fiction that the small g sounds of the autumn night were the cries of worms. Mimi ze naku. Okay, so obviously worms don't really cry, but they came up with this idea that they do cry, and whenever you see that phrase, Mimi ze naku, in uh, poetry, it's associated with all of autumn. Okay, on to plants now. The Rose of Sharon, or the Muke, mukuge. Okay, we saw this in the Basho poem too. Basho work oku no oku hoso, oku no hoso michi, early autumn. Mukuge. Okay, momo no mi, early autumn, the fruit. Momo no mi, the peach fruit, early autumn. Pear, or nashi, is all of autumn. Kaki, or persimmon, is late autumn. Okay. 
I'm reminded of the Kabata Yasunari uh, short story where um, there's a kaki involved, right? And it's, um, uh, never mind, I don't think that was the kaki. Um, uh, moving on, Dingo, Apple, Late Autumn. Budo, Grapes, All of Autumn. Uh, Kuri, Chestnuts, Late Autumn. Okay, so we saw uh, in Oku no Hosomichi, uh, the poet narrator muses on the word kuri and its etymological or kanji roots and um, he's doing so in late autumn I think. Uh, yuzu, citron, right, uh, which is still eaten or drunk, you find it in little bottles uh, today, that is late autumn, yuzu. Uh, momiji, of course late autumn, when the uh, leaves on the trees turn red, momiji is associated with late Autumn, the red leaves, specifically the red turned leaves of maples. Kaede is a word for maple tree. Uh, it's late autumn, refers to the leaves when they have turned color. Kaede. Uh, a polonia leaf, the kirihitoha, is early autumn. Okay, process of polonia leaves, the kirihitoha, famous for the sound of the fall of one of its large leaves. A classic symbol of autumn's arrival. Okay, the willow leaves, Yanagi Chiru, uh, mid autumn, Konomi, nuts and seeds, all of autumn, Japanese ivy or tsuta, kind of vine, all of autumn, its leaves turn red in autumn. Basho, the uh, banana kind of plant from which um, Basho took his name is all of autumn. Okay, also called a plantain sometimes. Produces inedible fruit. A poetical subject because of the sound of its broad, fragile leaves in the autumn wind and rain. Okay, Yare Basho is a tattered Basho, a torn Basho, well known for its large, fragile leaves which tear in the wind. So whenever you see yare, basho, the phrase in a poem, it is associated with late autumn. Orchids, or lang in Japanese, is associated with mid-autumn. Asagao, or the morning glory, early autumn. The coxcomb, or keito, is associated with all of autumn. Ine, or rice plants, all of autumn. Okay, it refers to the mature plants. Early rice, wase, is mid-autumn. Mid okay, so the wase comes first, wase. This is the wase of waseda, of course. Uh, and then by uh, later in the autumn, it turns to ine, I think. Um, fallen ears, ochibo, late autumn. Tattered lotus, yarehasu, late autumn. And we've also already had hasu for lotus in summer. This is specifically tattered lotus. So a hasu by itself is a summer word, but here it's yare hasu, so it's late autumn. Ksanohana um, is grasses and forbs in bloom all of autumn. Frequently translated as grass blossoms, but includes many flowering plants. At the point that I mentioned in uh, the other video, the first video, kusa is not only grass. It can refer to flowering plants, a number of flowering plants as well. Seeds of grasses, ksanomi, all of autumn. Okay. Uh, withered tips, udagade, late autumn. Those are the frosted tips of plants and trees. A bush clover, or hagi. We saw hagi in the Matsubasha work that we read on several occasions. When, I think when he sees the prostitutes, he uh, says hagi to tsuki at the end of that uh, hokku that he writes on that occasion. Hagi, or bush clover, is associated with early autumn. Pampas grass, or susuki, is uh, an autumn image for all of autumn. Okay, it's a kigo that is associated with uh, the whole of autumn. Okay, for the waving silvery fronds it's famous for. Um, wind in the reeves, ogi no koe. Early autumn, literally voice of the reeds. Ogi is another way to say ashi, a reeds. Uh, the kudzu flowers, or kudzu no hana, is an early autumn turn. Bell flower, or kikyo, 
is the, or sometimes called the Chinese balloon flower, <laughs> is an early autumn word, low-growing plant with moderate-sized blue flowers, and ominaishi is literally the maiden flower, right, ominaishi. It's written, I think, with shoujo hana, is the kanji, if I'm not mistaken, um, and it's a yellow valerian, yellow valerian in uh, uh, fancy terminology, and ominaishi is associated with early autumn, and akano mamma is not grass, early autumn, and finally, kinoko. Kinoko, mushrooms or fungus, is associated with late autumn. Okay, now I'm starting to drift a bit out of consciousness here uh, from fatigue. So we're going to do this as fast as possible. Winter now, okay? We have winter and the same subcategories that we went through with all the other seasons. Uh, let us begin with the explicitly seasonal words that are kigo for uh, winter. Winter withering, fuyuzade, that's for all winter. Koharu is in, meaning, means Indian summer, and it is associated with early winter. Literally, koharu, literal, little spring. Toshi no kure, midwinter. Toshi no kure is the close of the year, right? Toshi no kure, midwinter word. Yuku toshi, okay, so we saw the yuku haru, we saw yuku aki, now we see yuku toshi. Uh, meaning the passing year or midwinter, which occurs in midwinter, right? Yuku toshi. Um, New Year's Eve, toshi no yo, is midwinter too. So note that, yeah, with the, the year ends, we start the new year, and it should be the end of winter, but that doesn't really make much sense. I'll have to think about that a little bit, all right? The cold time, kan no uchi, is late winter word. Short day is the kanji, literally the kanji for tan jitsu, mijikai hi. Tanjitsu is for all of winter. Fuyu no yo is a winter night. Yo is the word for night, right? Yoru, same kanji. All winter. Tsumetashi is the word for cold, right? Tsumetai, the old way to say it. And the shiushike is tsumetashi, is a word for all, is a kigo season word for all winter. Um, tsumetashi is uh, for touch too. You touch something and you say tsumetashi. Samushi is uh, coldness in regard to uh, weather or air and so forth. Samui, right? The old way that the old shushike for that. Shushike is samus, is a kigo for all of winter. Clear and cold, sayuru, all of winter. Itsuru is the old verb for to freeze, that's for all of winter. Haru chikashi, okay, so haru ga chikai tiu imi de. Haru is close, nearly spring, this is a word for late winter. And setsubun, right? This is a late winter word. The last day of winter is the setsubun. It features a ritualistic chasing of devils out of the house during setsubun, allowing for, uh, good luck for the spring to come in, the traditional new year. Okay, so setsubun chases all of the bad spirits and bad uh, uh, whatever is out of the house at the end of the year. And compared to the in front of the backyard, so, 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 ba, ba, ba. okay. Next is the heavens. Okay, so in the winter, you look up into the skies and you see the following phenomena, uh, natural phenomena that are associated with winter. Fuyubare, clear winter day. That's an all winter word. Fuyunotsuki, winter moon, all winter. Kogarashi, early winter, withering winds. Okay, so we talk about this in my Nakanishi translation. We have a uh, section on this word kogarashi, okay, uh, literally the tree wither, that's right, yeah, ki o korasu kaze diu imide, right, it's the winds that come in and literally wither the trees, I mean, not, not literally, but figuratively, because they're so withering, that's the early winter word, north wind, kita no kaze, is all winter, winter shower is shigure, we also have a chapter on this word in the book, uh, it's a winter shower. Shigure, it's written with toki no ame, toki, the kanji for toki and ame, uh, early winter word. Fuyu no ame is all winter, means winter rain. Uh, arale is a snow pellets, arare, that's for all of winter. The kind of uh, a snow that comes down hard, snow pellets, arare, all winter. Sleet 
みぞれ、all winter。しも、frost、all winter。で、初雪、is the 初、the first、雪、snow。and that's associated with mid winter。snow in general、雪、late winter。Okay? Even though it may start snowing at the beginning of winter, the word snow by itself is associated as a kigo, season word with late winter. Snowflakes, kazahana. This is another word that we have a chapter on in our Nakanishi book, in my Nakanishi translation. Kazahana are snowflakes. Okay, kazahana. It's written with the kanji for kaze and hana, right? So it's、uh, associated with、uh, blossoms or、uh, petals. Falling down that are actually snowflakes. Okay, so literally wind flowers. Kaze hana, but it means something completely different. It means snowflakes, which again relates to that sort of mitate or kind of analogical imagination that the Japanese have shown since antiquity. Okay, next is the earth, winter mountains. Fuyu no yama, associated with all of winter. Kare no, okay, so withered field. Kare ta no. Is all of winter. Fuyu ta, winter paddy. Okay, fuyu no ta, fuyu paddy, fuyu ta, all winter. Mizu kadu, the, the water has dried up, literally is what it means.、Uh, all winter. Kori or ice is associated with late winter specifically, even though kori appears obviously much earlier. Kori itself is a late winter word. Tsudara, okay, icicles. Tsudara is the word for icicles. And that's associated specifically with late winter. Okay, next subcategory is the humanity stuff, the、uh, winter words that are associated with humans,、um, human activities, and so forth. Quilt, fton, is a winter word, all winter. Fton, of course, is the pair of quilts that you place on the floor for sleeping, the thicker one underneath. That's an all winter word. Zosui is what we drink in、uh, the winter, what we eat or drink. It's a kind of porridge.、Uh, that's an all winter word. Fuyu gomori. Okay, this is in our, my Nakanish translation as well, I think. Fuyu gomori is a winter seclusion. It means when you go inside your house and、uh, not, you don't come out of your house for, until the winter passes. That's called fuyu gomori. That's a word associated with all of winter. Sumi, charcoal. All of winter, because it's the time when you put the sumi in the brazier and you light the fire, the stove, and so forth. Fireplace, do, all winter. Okay, the do is the word for fireplace, and it's the same do that we saw in karo to sen, right, which、uh, was a phrase that Matsuo Basho liked, and he took it as his own phrase to represent what he was trying to do with haikai, and it means basically a do ka do, a fireplace in summer. Karo to sen, and a、um, and a fan in winter, an ogi fan in winter. In other words, something that's completely useless and、uh, out of step with the times or with the season and so forth. All right, that's do fireplace all winter. Hibachi is the small brazier associated with all of winter. Hunting kadi. Kadu is the verb, right? This is associated with winter. Because in antiquity, the Japanese aristocracy would go hunting in the winter for sport.、Uh, wicker fishnet, ajiro. This is another word that we talk about in、uh, my Nakanishi translation. Ajiro is a wicker fishnet associated with all of winter. Takibi, bonfire, associated with all of winter. Okay, Takibi, I think it's、uh, was it Shiganaoya. Either Shiganaoya or Kunikida Doppo, who wrote a story called Takibi. It's late in the day, I can't remember which, but、um, Takibi is,、um, you see it in modern Japanese literature s、uh, sometimes as well. It's、uh, the bonfire associated with all of winter.、Uh, tambai, searching for plum blossoms. Okay, ume o motomete, sagasu, right? Tambai, it's a late winter word. Takeuma is for all of winter, it's the stilts that you play with,、uh, a kind of toy. A bamboo horse. Tam, eto, take uma. That's、uh, associated with all of winter. And finally, Toshi wasure is the bow nenkai, right? Today,、uh, at companies, we have our bow nenkai at the end of the year, or we used to at least before the world started to end.、Um, 
but yes, Toshi Wasurde is a mid-winter word. Forgetting the year. Okay. On to observances, the next subcategory. Toshi no Ichi. The year market. Toshi Ichi is like a market. It, that's associated with mid-winter. When the market set up in mid-December specifically to sell New Year's decorations, toys, and related items. Somewhat like a Christmas tree lot, but broader in scope. That's the Toshi no Ichi, a midwinter word. Bashouki is Basho's Matsuo Basho, the poet, the Haikai poet, uh, his memorial day, day number 12 of the 10th lunar month. Um, blah, blah, blah. November 28th in uh, the Gregorian calendar. At uh, Busson, Yosa Busson's Memorial Day, Busonki. So we have Bashoki and we also have uh, Busonki. Yosa Busson is the other great uh, poet of the Edo period, and his uh, Memorial Day is on day 25 of the 12th lunar month, so corresponding to January 17th in the Gregorian calendar. Okay, now on to the next subcategory animals. Let's go through this as fast as possible. Um, these are the animals associated with winter. Taka, hawk, all winter. Kan suzume, cold sparrows, late winter. Kan garasu, cold crow, late winter. Okay. Mizutori, water fowl, the water fowl bird, all winter. Kamo, wild ducks, all winter. Okay, so the ducks at the pond that I take my kids to often, um, the ducks are there all throughout the year. However, as a seasonal word, they're associated only with winter, the whole of winter. Oshidori are mandarin ducks, all of winter. Chidori, plovers, sandpipers, all of winter. Chidori, you see uh, this image of Chidori running along the beaches in the Shinkokinshu, I think. There's a few poems with the Chidori in them. Uh, the grebe, the kaitsuburi, is uh, all winter. Buri, the yellowtail fish, all winter. Fugu, the fish that if you uh, eat at the wrong time or if you eat the wrong part of the fish, you'll die. Fugu, blowfish, or if you have an allergy, I forget what it is, but you'll die if something goes wrong with the fugu, all winter. Kangoit, gold, golden carp, uh, cold carp, literally. Kang samui te kaite. Kangoi is a late winter word. Kambuna, late winter word. The sea cucumber, namako, all winter. Kaki, oysters, uh, winter, all of winter. Fuyu no hae, hae, winter fly, all winter. Watamushi, early winter. Okay, now next subcategory, plants, winter plants. So these are the plants associated with winter. Let's go through this as quickly as possible. Soubai. Early plum blossoms, late winter. Okay, so early. Bai is the kanji for ume, and that's associated with late winter. Kairibana is a word that means flowers out of season. Kairibana, uh, returning flowers literally. That's associated with early winter. The winter camellia, kang tsubaki. So tsubaki is the word for camellia flower, camellia plant flower. Um, but uh, it's got the kan before it, the kanji for samui, so it's uh, late winter. Uh, sazanka is a sasankwa. I guess the word in English comes from the Japanese, it sounds like sasankwa. I'm not sure what it is, early winter. Chanohana, tea flowers, early winter. Sendyo, hermit smartweed, all winter. A literal translation for its red berries, sendyo. Spear flower or the mandyo is all winter. Nante no mi, all winter, the nanding berries, which are red. Uh, konoha, tree leaves, all winter, so the phrase konoha. Whenever you see that, it's associated with all of winter, falling or fallen tree leaves, is what it uh, denotes. Ochiba, fallen leaves, okay, the ha that have ochita, fallen, that's associated with all of winter. Winter grow, fuyu kodachi, all of winter. Cold mums, kangiku. Okay, giku, kiku is uh, chrysanthemums. So I guess this is cold chrysanthemums, literally, uh, associated with all of winter. The narcissus, 
is the season and that's late winter. Kare giku is uh, the withered chrysanthemums, the withered kiku, kare giku, withered mums it says here, all winter. Kare hasa, the withered hasa or the lotus, all winter. Fuyu na, winter greens, na is the, I think the kanji for yasai, no, ya, sai, sai I think. Fuyu uh, na, all winter. Negi or onion is a word associated with all of winter. Daikon, Japanese radish, all of winter. Kabu, turnip, all of winter. Uh, Fuyukusa, all of winter. Often translated as winter grass, but has a much broader meaning. Again, kusa doesn't just mean grass, it means uh, it denotes a wide array of flowering grasses. Uh, withered reeds, kare ashi, all winter. Withered pampas grass, kare obana. Okay, pampas grass, this is a word you see a lot in uh, English translation when you read Japanese literature in English translation. Pampas grass, when you read the original, you see the word obana. This uh, is discussed in my Nakanishi translation as well. Kare obana. And kare mugura, withered burrweed, is associated with all of winter. And finally, yabu koji, all winter, the spear flower. Koji, this is a kanji for koji. Um, looks kind of like mugi and uh, kiku, somewhere in the middle of those two things. Another species also noted for its red berries. Then at the end of the list is a brief note here about the new year. In the old lunar calendar, the first day of the first month coincided roughly with the beginning of spring. Okay, roughly with, not uh, strictly. So the, the beginning of spring is sometime around the first day of the first month. And hence the new year celebrations and observations took place during the first two weeks of spring. Many season words today still carry both meanings for traditionalists. But with the adoption of the Gregorian commercial calendar in 1873, okay, so I think in the first video I said uh, the Gregorian calendar was adopted around 1890. It's uh, obviously much earlier. It's in 1873, so just uh, six, seven years into the Meiji period, Japanese adopted the Gregorian calendar. Um, with the adoption of the Gregorian calendar, the Haikai community decided on a compromise. Season words specific to celebrating the new year moved into a special fifth season. Okay, roughly equivalent to uh, January 1st to 15th. And those that pertain to early spring, roughly February, stayed in early spring. However, a number of season words incorporating the word spring remain in the New Year section of the season word list because they were so indelibly embedded in the New Year tradition. And then it gives a list of these New Year associated words such as Shinneng, Hatsuharu, Kozo, meaning last year, you write uh, Sakuneng or Kyoneng, but you read it Kozo. Ganjitsu, this is a New Year's word. Koshogatsu is a little New Year. In the lunar calendar, the 15th of the first month, first lunar month, is the night of the first full moon of the year, hence little New Year. Still based, still observed on our... Okay. Hatsuhi, some other words associated with the New Year. Hatsuhi, Hatsuzora, Hatsunagi. The first calm in the tide. Uh, Hatsufuji, the first Mount Fuji, uh, is one of the earth subcategories of New Year. Okay, so basically, New Year words took their own seas, became a, uh, an independent category, I guess, right? In addition to the four seasons, you have New Year as a separate class. Okay. Harugi, spring kimono. Harugi is a New Year's word. Toso, Mold rice wine zoni we had zoni above I think too didn't we oh that was so sweet zoni is a New Year's word kadomatsu shime kazari horai okay the Isle of the Blessed horai is like Mount Panglai right that you see in a lot of Chinese paintings Chinese mythological equivalent for the Western Elysian fields the horai is specifically a New Year word kagami mochi Mere rice cakes, matsu osame, hatsu yu, hatsu yume, nenshi, toshi dama, hatsu dayori, kaki zome, hatsu ichi, hatsu ni, kai zome, karuta, hagoita, temari, hama yumi, manzai, shimi mai. 
シシマイ。It's a,、uh, the lion, シシ。The lion, the lion dance, a ritual pageant. Okay, observances, w a k a m i z a Right, this is、uh, one of the words we discussed in my Nakanishi book. It's a New Year's word. Literally, young water, the first water drawn on New Year's Day. Seven herbs, the nanaksa, right? Seven flowering plants or herbs. Medicinal, traditionally eaten on、uh, January 7th to promote health in the coming year. Picking young greens, wakanatsumi, one of the oldest traditions recorded in earliest literature, retains meaning today even though the new year and beginning of spring no longer coincides. The greens are the seven herbs, the nanaksa. Noted above. Okay. Sagicho yabiru hatsumode. Hatsumode, of course, is the first visit to a shrine or temple,、uh, usually done on the very first day of the year.、Uh, Twittering hatsu suzume, hatsu garasu, hatsu tori. So the various hatsus, the first twittering of the birds, the first raven cry is the hatsu garasu, the first rooster crowing is the hatsu tori, first rooster crowing of the year.、Um, Shida. The shepherd's purse, don't know what that is.、Right. And then at the very end, there is a note about Yamamoto Kenkichi's、uh, work, the Nihon Dai Saijiki.、Right. You can read that on your own. And later he collected this same season words for his Kihon Kigo Gohyaku Sen, the essential Kigo Gohyaku selections. Published in 1986, and I have a link in the description to that work as well. All right. To propose an addition. Okay, we don't need to propose any additions. All right, that concludes our、um, somewhat long winded、um, and somewhat fading in and out of consciousness、uh, three videos on the essential 500 season words, Kigo. Of traditional Japanese poetry. If you have any questions, send me an email. Bye bye.